Hello! And this lesson is about the evolution and dispersion of mammals since their origin until today. This is my first lecture in English and I apologize for the several errors that I may commit. I used it as base to make this lesson the most recent molecular phylogenies, that is, with characters based on DNA and RNA and not those based on morphology. However, the biogeographic patterns were designed based on the fossils found all around the world. To make the comprehension easy, the full fossil mammal lineages will be not seated. Despite the fact that some had an amazing success for thousands of years, their inclusion would make this class very confusing. The aim of this lesson is to understand the evolution and dispersal of living mammals groups around the world. Well, this is the world 180 million years ago, more or less in the half of Jurassic period. The continents were still all united and beginning to separate. Of course, the level of the ocean was different and the continents hadn't these outlines so similar with today's. But I maintained the known outlines to make the continents easy to identify. The principle of this lesson would be to talk about the mammal's origin, but unfortunately this information is not yet available to science. The animals of the mammal's lineage exist since the end of Carboniferous, about 300 million years ago. And this lineage's transformation through the million of years is so gradual that it's difficult to say at which point the proper mammals appear. Either way, it happens at a point not much far from 180 million years ago. In that time, the world was crowded by dinosaurs, pterosaurs, crocodiles and others. We don't know how the first mammals were, but they surely were small and with a generic morphology that is resembling a shrill or skunk or something like that. Only as a starting point, let's consider that the mammals appear at some point between the continents of the north and of the south. In a few million years, the mammals diversified in two lineages, the one from north and the one from south, if we can call them this way, and some fossil lineages that don't matter here. The north ones are the Borealosphenids, marked in red, and the south ones are the Australosphenids, marked in yellow. In a short time, they spread throughout the globe. 140 million years ago, we are in Cretaceous period and the continents of the north and south were separating from each other, maintaining just a single point of connection between the Americas. Among other lineages totally extinct today, the Borealosphenids were divided, probably in some point of China, in two principal groups, the marsupials, marked here in brown, and the placentals, marked here in pink. In a short time, the placentals dispersed to the entire north of the planet. The marsupials also dispersed, reaching the North America and the South America some million years after, over the terrestrial connection that still existed between them. 130 million years ago, the continents of the South were separated totally from those of the North, forming a landmass known as Gondwana, while the North landmass is called Laurasia. The mammals diversified in this period, but we still are in this dinosaur age, and the mammals are mostly nocturnal, with shrill shape, and very small, with rare exceptions that were not larger than a badger. 120 million years, the Gondwana begins to break up. India and Madagascar were isolated from the rest, and Africa contacted again the Northland mass. The placentals spread through the entire north, reaching the Africa through this restored contact. Similarly, the marsupials spread through the entire South America. 105 million years, the continents are still separating, but for practical purposes, I will maintain them in the same position, because what matters here is the contact among them, and not their true positions. What is more relevant to observe is that the South America is connected to Africa just through a tiny tip, more or less in the region of the future Pernambuco states of Brazil. It is exactly through here that the placentals enter in South America, after dispersing all over Africa, dislocating the Australosphenid and some African fossil lineages. At this point, the marsupials were becoming extinct in North continents, and they remained just in South America and a part of Antarctic. Some million years after, a group called the Afrotherians, or the mammals from Africa, appeared among the African's placentals, marked here in violet. 
The current Afrotherians include all the mammals with exclusively African origin elephants, hyraxes, manatees, moles, and the elephant shrills, and also the aardvark. Rapidly, they spread over the African continent, but we must remember that in that time all of them still resembled small shrills. 95 million years. Still in Cretaceous period, the South America finally becomes an island. There, the placentals that come from Africa originate the lineage of the Shenarthra, marked here in purple, that they are the ancestors of the only family of living mammals that is originally from South America, that comprises today the sloths, the armadillos, and anteaters. But we can't forget that in that time, all of them still resemble small shrills. 85 million years emerges in the North Land Mass, the lineage called as Laurasatheria because it originates from Laurasia. Here I represent it in orange. The Laurasatheria are, without the slightest doubt, the current mammals more diversified, including bats, all odd toed ungulates, horses, tapirs, and rhinoceros, even toed ungulates, goats, oxes, sheep, antilopes, deers, camels, giraffes, pigs, hippopotamus, and their closest relatives, whales and dolphins. All the lineages of the carnivores, that are dogs, cats, hyenas, badgers, raccoons, bears, besides seals, sea lions and walruses, also the moles and shrews of Europe and the pangolins. But in that time, all shared the same form of a shrew. The Lorazatherians rapidly spread over all North land mass. 75 million years the rodents arrived, derived from a lineage of placentals that still lived in Laurasia in that time. Here they are shown in grey color. The rats, with their extremely elevated metabolic rate and with almost no feeding restriction, in other words, they eat anything, spread all around the world at the wink of an eye, reaching all the continents that possessed any land communication and floating in vegetation boats for all the continents close enough, in this case the South America. 70 million years ago, the continents in the south of Gondwana moved a little and India separated from Madagascar, becoming two independent islands. The New Zealand too, that passed most of its time more under the sea level than above it, was isolated from the rest, still virgin of mammals. In the region of the future Southeast Asia appears a group marked in green that will originate the flying lemurs, three shrews and the primates. 65 million years ago, finally the dinosaur age became to an end. By and large, any animal with more than 80 pounds had become extinct in the big cataclysm that killed the big reptiles. The survivors were almost all the small vertebrates, frogs, the smaller crocodiles, turtles, the tiny dinosaurs in that time represented just by the birds, and of course the mammals. From this point on, the mammals stopped to have all the same form of shrew, and just some extinct families maintained this physiognomy. The majority started to grow up, occupying the ecologic function left by the extinction of the big animals. More than just grow up, they began to diversify. Even so, it is very curious to observe that in almost all lineages of living mammals, it still resists at least one family that maintains the shrill pattern closer to the original mammal shape. Let's go along with some of the most significant lineages. 63 million years ago, the primate ancestors that already existed in this time went out from Southeast Asia, going to Europe, where they originated the lemurs that rapidly arrived in Africa in relative short time. In North America, the bats appear. 55 million years ago, India migrates quickly to the north. Bats spread to entire Asia and Africa by flying. Antarctic touched the South America again, generating a land bridge between these two continents. After much, much time, South America leaves the island condition. This way, the marsupials of South America pass to Antarctic, while a small population of Australosphenids come to South America, but they don't resist for long. In Africa, also the Afrotherians start to differentiate, and we have the first evidence of an elephant ancestral. 45 million years, the lemurs come floating in vegetation boats to Madagascar, that now is closer to Africa. Also with vegetation boats, the primates arrived in South America, where they will originate all the New World monkeys. The marsupials spread through Antarctic and arrived to Australia. Among the Laurasatherians arise the first lineage of horses and tapirs in North America. Also there appears the camel's lineage. 
Among the Afrotherians, elephants reached Asia. 35 million years ago, horses and tapirs spread to Asia. Many things happened with the continent. India, in its journey to north, finally reached Asia, whose collision will elevate the Himalayas. Then, the Indian fauna changed and became full of Laurasotherians too. Australia and South America were isolated from Antarctic, making it an island. This isolation in the South Pole formed ocean currents that encircled the entire continent. These ocean currents actuated as a refrigerator coil and Antarctic gradually froze, becoming sterile. The total freezing of Antarctic and disappearance of its forests was completed 50 million years ago. The first giant sloths appear in South America. 25 million years ago, Africa becomes an island again. The first old world monkeys appear in Africa. This lineage will originate the baboons, the proboscis monkey, the Gibraltar monkeys, Hesus monkeys, and the tailless apes. The marsupials diversify in Australia, beginning to form the current families, as those of kangaroos and koalas, wombats and Tasmanian devils. 80 million years ago, Africa connects with Eurasia again, and through this contact, the Laurasotherian lineages pass to Africa, that in the future will become its most characteristic fauna. The odd toed ungulates, zebras and rhinoceros, the even toed ungulates, bulls, antilopes, giraffes, hippopotamus, and the carnivory ones, cats, dogs, hyenas. Lemurs vanished from Africa, arrived in the Middle East, the first ancestor of the tailless apes. Lemurs vanished from Europe too, remaining restricted to Madagascar, where they are until today. Elephants reached India and posteriorly the North America. 40 million years ago, the old world monkeys crossed Asia, arriving at Japan. Bats come flying to South America. 8 million years ago, dispersal of the tailless apes to Africa, where they'll originate gorillas, chimps and humans. And to the east of Asia too, where they'll originate the orangutans and gibbons known of the origins in this order. Five million years the tailless apes vanished from Middle East and appears the first known ancestor of human lineage in Africa. Three million years ago the North and South Americas again joined each other after more than 120 million years separated occurs the big American interchange where the North fauna goes to South and the South fauna goes to North through the isthmus of Panama. The marsupials arrive in North America in the example of the opossum, while the Laurasia the Therians reached South America as cats, dogs, bears, deers, horses, tapirs, camels in form of llamas and others. Elephants also come to South America. On the other hand, giant sloths reach North America. One million years ago begin the cycles of big glaciations. The ocean's level decreases, exposing many lands of Indonesia and Malaysia, making the New Guinea and the Australia to become less isolated. So bats flying and rats floating in vegetation boats arrive in Australia. Bats went further still and also flying reached the New Zealand, becoming the first mammals in history to arrive in the archipelago and the only ones before the human colonization. Tapirs and camels were become extinct in North America. This explains the recent distribution of these groups present just in Asia and Africa for camels and South America. One lineage of elephants went to live in frozen zones, originating the mammoths. A little later, the elephants become extinct also in Americas and not frozen Europe, surviving just in Africa, India and some Mediterranean islands. Also occurs the first dispersal of hominids out of Africa, in this case to Europe and Asia, promoted by the Homo erectus. Many other things happened at that time, as the horses, for example, that vanished from Americas. Mainly, much has changed, especially with the little help of humans, as the extinction of mammoths and giant sloths, the animal domestication that made dogs and cows to spread across the globe, broke back horses to Americas and caused the extinction of some other animals, as lions and hippopotamus from Europe, and obviously the big and huge damage done in the fauna of Australia. Recapitulating, remember that virtually all of today's mammals derived from the Borealosphenids, or mammals of North, that appeared on Jurassic period. But in our map, it is still possible to visualize a small yellow spot in a corner of Australia. Yes, the Australosphenids, yet not being fully extinguished. 
if anyone noticed the lack of them during this presentation. Today, this age-old mammal lineage, so ancient that it still have the older reproduction mechanism that means they lay eggs, is represented by just two kind of animals, the platypus and the equidinus, that live just in Australia and New Guinea. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson, and thanks.